I shuddered awake to see the dull blackness of the windowless bedroom. A mild damp hung in the moist air, increasing the irritation of a dirty carpet against my side. I felt early miserable. No, in fact, I literally felt like oh shit. Was like a really bad hangover, yet without a headache. Instead, all the suffering could be attributed to my wrong gut. My insides felt putrid. A sun would turn, threatening to throw up whoever I'd managed to scrounge down. I gagged, lurching forward and raising my head in an effort not to choke. Okay, never mind threatening. I was throwing up. I directed my mouth away from me best I could before I heaved up a foul torrent of vomit over the dirty carpet. Just as thought as it was done, however, I gagged twice more. What the fuck was happening to me? I whimpered mentally, wiping the vile bodily fluid through from my muscle with a shivering forehoof. And so, my insides didn't seem content with just that. A moment was sickly shifting later and I was heaving again. I closed my eyes. Almost in tears as the gut-wrenching emotions continued, the acidic vial stinging my throat. The splutter, caught and a wheeze, the foul torrents seemed to seize or merely run out of food to chalk up. Gasping for breath, I fell back to the carpet and rasping inside, aching in protest. By goddess, when I the gods and I get my house in the fucker right, that did this to me, I... My angry curse was broken as I raised its weight leg and hoofed to my cold forehead. I may have slept last night, but it only wasn't pleasant. I'd come to be acclimated to nightmares, yet that didn't make them any less traumatic. With the tire groaned, I sat up again, a forehoof clutching my aching guts as I looked up at the dark room. With my weary eyes swimming, I was thankful for the lack of light. The only illumination I could see was the soft glow of my pet box still singing by the bedside. I may have mistaken the world around me for nothing but dark oblivion if not for its glow. Not that such a place would be any better than the wasteland anyway. The only th other tether holding me to dreary reality was the damp air around me and the sound of rainfall against the outer structure. The storm, it seemed, had not finished. And judging by how damp the carpet was, it was eager to submerge the whole neighborhood. I just hoped it was daytime outside, or whatever a day equated to in the wasteland. Steadily, I rested my hoofs. Stub muscles and the crippled forehoof added to my inner symphony of pain as I downed another healing potion and took some more medics. I had to pause for a long moment to collect myself, even then I felt as if I could collapse. Fuck. I still needed to find Star and across the desert before I could get this straight. As that thought crossed my mind, my ears perked up and I once again checked our broadcast frequency. Once again, my pet bug was silent. I gave a frustrated groan before another thought came to me. The memory of the terminal is just out in the foyer. They would present a welcome direction. At that, I looked down at my pet bug, sitting just within reach of my outstretched hooves. It looked almost as if it were cowering under the bed frame. Its inability to provide me with the signal from stars outside to seem to terrify it. Rightfully so. It looks like I didn't try and smash it after what I heard last night. Not that it would be any good. These things were practically indestructible. Regardless, my gear didn't function without it, so I couldn't leave it here. And if I even wanted to see my pay. I shook my head. Why did that matter more? As far as I knew, I was going to be dead soon. My only job now was to save the one pony I could. Despite what we said to each other in last night, my eyes were still hesitant to turn towards the mirror sleeping peacefully on the couch. The sound, so soft sound of Cherry's beneath whistled through the gloom. Her pink coat and cherry red mane and only just graced by the pit buck's sickly artificial glow. She looked more than a little cute. Hiding under a stable, barding blanket. But I'd make it more than clear to myself not to be her in that regard. Unfortunately, nothing about her like I thought about almost every other mare I saw was becoming increasingly hard. Damn it, Dragonfire! I flushed a little, my ears burning, and I realized how much 
louder thoughts could be taken. I took that thought away instantly. I was not that bad of a pony. Despite the bland disregard for my self-imposed rules, the joke was enough to spur my weary spirit. Still smiling slightly, I wrapped my magic around the pet bug and helmet, placing the latter atop my head and reattaching the former to my foreleg. I swear my life wasn't depending on something other than crude thoughts. I'd have bugged the terminal until next week. The fact it was only one on the desktop to work. However, made the idea frustratingly unpractical. I'd already been forced to back out ten times before I finally corrected. The password was Homestead. And an old pony's home? Go figure, I guess. Nevertheless, the option to open the wall safe was safely for me. Staring at it, I was caught between the desire to give a big Viking to the terminal and save it for Cherry. Ultimately, my soft spot for the pink mare won out, and I saved the task for her. If nothing else, I get to see her cute smile. That was more of a reward than remembering my victory in the face of an inanimate object. There was, however, something else on the terminal screen. A recording. Fuck, if I hadn't seen another one of those damn things again, I was gonna scream. It was almost as if by being the terminal's damn Pascal was enough. Now, it was mocking me with more things I'd rather not hear. I groaned to myself, grinding my teeth, and theorizing that if I didn't listen to the recording, the fucker could rub its success in my face. Wow. I got a huge training machine as if a, re a real thing. My mind nickered, wittingly. Fine, you little bastard! I hissed. To pose my thoughts and the irritating terminal as I hit play on the first of the recordings, snatching my pit buck away from his OS to gain some small satisfaction. Well, it doesn't look like any of us are making it out of here. After all, the sky waggons are nowhere to be seen. The instant sound of a despondent buck's voice filled the air. I regret even hacking the damn thing. And now, I respect, I had to listen. Regardless of how this recording ended, I also knew this was going to make me feel even more like shit. Even so, I made an effort to engross myself as much as possible in anything that wasn't recording as I allowed it to continue. It's almost been, it's been almost three hours since the sky went black. I think the pigs are hiding uh, way up there or something. It's from the rain? Well, I think it's killing everybody. The bug sighed wearily. His voice is dead as I was beginning to feel. Uh, I think most of the folks here know it. And those who that can tell what's going on are better off. I haven't seen Mr. Waddle before and, well, he only asked me about his daughter in main hands if it were a normal afternoon. Truth is, I don't know anymore. All I do know is that there was a rumor going around that Zebra is hitting Gladsdale. And well, I have no idea about main hand. But I think it's safe to say it's gone too. Pug paused, seemed to think. Since despite all the dreadful events that must have been going on around him, he managed to give a slight laugh. You know, I wasn't even talking about trying to get up to the stable near desert springs or the one south of the lake. Nobody showed. Damn ministry. I can't believe that Flush herself came down here only weeks ago and now she's abandoning every pony. I'd rather ten bits is because Las Vegas is now a radioactive crater. I can even see the green flashes against the clouds from here. Yeah, save some fine rich gamblers over a group of as and old ponies? It's all about what's most practical, I suppose. You know, that's one of my only regrets about this whole thing. Bring us uncle close to one of the private cities in question and never going there. He gave another humble chuckle, seeming to think deeply about the possibility that it would never be. Around him, the faint sound of the panic began to spur and missed a chorus of coughing. The bug's laugh was seized by a sigh of the thought of a city he never see seemed to fade. Well, oh, I guess this is it. I got a few weeks worth of food, providing the rain doesn't kill us. But I don't think anybody here is going to last the next few days. All I will say is that if anybody finds this, please tell them my wife. I will call. Please tell them I love them both very much.
The recording cackled in, into a bit of the end. In spite of all, I told myself I was frozen in place. I never, no, you even thought. I just listened. Just as I had predicted, it made me feel so cold and empty. The damp floor, dust choked skeletons and dirty wire lines on the wall way above my head. Made his last words unsettlingly clear. Those ponies. All of them? I merely sighed. Both the curse for me and a salute to a realm long since obliterated. So I shook off the sorrow, stood up, and turned to face the shattered glass in front. Beyond, the eerie mist was scared by torrents of rain. Thunder rumbled in the distance, and lightning flashed high above. It was certainly easy to imagine that dark day centuries ago. The radioactive downpour slowly boiling everybody in life. I was just glad that this storm wasn't a glowing razor's rad storm. Yet only the survival part of me felt that insult. Leaning forward, I rested my head on the end of the desk, peering aimlessly into the mist. Then my eyes wandered to my pit bucket as I sailed my four hooves on the desk top. Well, what are you looking at? I hissed, like some crazy bunny. Well, it's a new low for you, Dragfire. Talking to inanimate objects. Must be a side effect of being the glove so many deaths, I meant proposed. I rambled to myself for a good long moment, pausing at intervals as if to let the pit buck respond. I even cursed his existence when it failed to do so. Then my expression just fell flat, my ears falling against my mane as I slumped down to the desk's midsection. I felt like total shit. The room was total shit. Everything was just total shit. So I whined the device on my legs seemed to look at me skeptically. The guy was some ungrateful fool or spoiled brat who had been told no for the first time. Well, what do you know? It was just a piece of metal. It didn't even work properly. And... Wait. So my one open eye, as I suddenly shift in my vision. Words? I would advise caution. I glanced at my helmet sitting on the desktop, having taken it off to get a better look at the terminal screen. Okay, this was definitely not my visor then. I was going crazy. I hoped I wasn't that crazy. Advice appeared in my vision for just a moment. For the EFS, which I knew definitely didn't work, without the pair of red dots. What the fuck? I raised up, looking at the device in my forelock skeptically before putting it on my helmet and glancing out of the shattered doorway and slipping on my helmet. Sure, it had to be faulty there. Number of targets. Two. Advisor confirmed. Outlining uh, two red shapes in the rain swept street. I swiftly ducked back down behind the corner cover, bracing my back against the wood and trying not to once at the internal discomfort of my motions induced. Despite the danger, I looked at my pit buck, blinking as the strangest way appeared in my vision. The thing had never worth them anything more than a fancy torch. Blood force weapon and sometimes a paperweight. Right now I just blamed it on myself cracking up. I would have to look into it later. Currently, I had two bigger problems. My visor retained the marks of the two ponies, both of which were heavily armed given the shapes of barrels on their sides and the heavy armor that was easily distinguishable from their natural figure. Both were bucks. The armor looked familiar. The marked hostility gave me no reason to hesitate. The sound blaster was stiff he levitated to my side. They passed us by, and I have no reason to use it. I glanced to my left, through the gap between the desk and the wall, then at the door to the room holding my sleeping companion. Suddenly, the sounds of hoose hiss emerged from the rain's wet mist, and the sounds of glass crunching under metal stole my attention. Oh, where the fuck are you even going there? When the bugs asked dryly. I shifted to the far left side of the desk, only just concealing myself from their view as the sound of glass shattering hoofs have ceased. Because Chief told us to find whoever got past Shell and Lemongrass. Put two and two together, you idiot. It's raining. Anybody coming this way is going to be taking shelter if they know what's good for them. The second buck, the one I assumed was closest, realized I swore I heard his companion mutter. 
They're plainly smarter than us, then. So much for passing through. I tell myself you're calling the name Chief immediately. Besides, you want to end up like Lemon Wedge? Closer by called to a hit back to his companion. I instantly fell a slight sting for not having killed that mayor myself. Nothing but didn't verbally answer. But after seeing Carnage, I can only assume he gave some sort of visual kind of fuck no response. Single error, and the hostess resumed. I just twitched, judging that they were right in the middle of the foyer. Well, it was now or never, I told myself. A second later, I sprang up style blaster ready on me to find the former of the pair was far closer to my left than I had anticipated. As we saw each other, both our eyes widened. Filling gaps in his gear, I see he was a deep blue coated unicorn, with a wide mane and tail. He wore that same dark star branded armor etched with glimpse that my mind was still badly to recognize. The swarm flared the moment I managed to swing my weapon around. Well, there was no way he could, he could draw his weapon, so I felt myself tossed back against the far wall, my rear hose clattering against the safe. Wow, another one who actually knew how to use telekinesis for something other than guns? Oh, and shit. I scrambled my hose as the blue buck raised a shotgun in his magic. Hey, I've got some pony over here, he called back, pointing the gun at my forehead. Don't move, he growled, pressing barrel to my forehead. I froze. Sal blaster stiff in the air at my side. His eyes were firm, locked firmly on it. He wasn't going to kill me. Really? Oh, well, that was a mistake. He should have been watching more than my obvious firearm. A moment later, and I slammed one of the broken terminals into the back of his head with my magic. In the same action, I kicked his forehoods from under him with my weir legs sending him sprawling over me. Not the ideal way to have a stallion laying with me, but to make sure he was out cold, I just sit again with the butt of my blaster, then wrapped in my magic. It was heavy. Brandon managed more. Even if my crimpled limbs screamed, my guts plainly didn't like me counteracting so hard on something other than them. As anticipated, the second bug appeared around the corner in time with a red bar moving in my vision. A bachelor marking his new position as a green earth pony posed to fire a saddle and mounted a rifle at me. No, no, I warned, limiting the first buck between us. His eyes whined slightly, ordering it, and he gave a slight grunt. Now it was my turn to get some answers. Who the fuck are you ponies? I hissed, adding extra emphasis to pressing the barrel on my blaster against the unconscious buck's head. The green bug looked at me with disgust seeming opposed to answering. I had kind of expect such a thing and hastily brought the barrel of my blaster to under the chin of his companion, pressing another weapon of the plasma verity to the back. Hmm? Um, I pressed impatiently. That caused attention. More so. But it was better than simply killing them. But if he cooperated, maybe I'd let them leave. I would, have you, I would ask you the same thing. He growled. I shifted from me to his friend, then back to me as if judging whether I had it in me. The sinister really helped he didn't doubt it. His response merely pissed me off. However, my scowl deepened. What's that to you? I asked sharply, knowing full well how incredibly hypocritical I was. The green buck snickered, then snorted. You're just some cheap merc, ain't you? I took a deep breath. I was anything but cheap. I know what I'd call a true merc. Yeah, clearly these ponies were above that. Or at least they all thought they were. A little filling out to do the dirty work. But far from home, ain't ya? He added, becoming increasingly twitchy with uh, his rifles. Yes, I was uncomfortably far from home, and that made me all the more dangerous. I have no idea what you're talking about. I replied, pressing the barrel of my blaster closer to the unconscious buck's head to fortify the truth in my words. Apparently that didn't work. The buck merely sniggered impatiently. Oh, it's all right. My apologies. Do you think your little friend just happened to get into one of the most guarded reliquaries we know of by accident, did he? He told me condensingly. The reliquary? 
Okay, I'd had just about enough of this. Or so my gaze t trying not to shift to the door behind my new friend. He said my friend. They couldn't know she was in there, or if they were going to kill anybody, it had to be me. My mind slowly clicked as the bug gave me a sly smile, but I realized that the situation had just reversed dramatically. That's right. You and your little cold friend? Go up and you can see him again, he taunted. Star. They had Star? Celestia, damn them. Luna, fuck me. I should never have split us up. I was never fr further. Where the fuck is he, you fucker? I growled like some feral dog. The bug smirked, glancing at his captive companion. Why don't you come with me and find out? Home base is a nice, comfortable stable not too far from here. He invited slightly, sweeping hoof towards the accent. My expression told him my answer. I still responded. Fuck you. The bug nearly leaned back slightly, and was sitting before saying casually. Oh well, then. It appears we are in passing, my friend. A dull clung severed his words, his eyes wavering. A moment Larry slumped forwards, unconscious on the floor behind for me. I thought it was confusion. A trick? He was faking. It was actually out cold. Then I looked up and was met with a far more surprising sight. The first buck fell from my magical grasp and as I saw Cherry stand in the doorway. Zap, zap, turned back after slamming the buck hard on the back of the head. See, I told you, it's not hard. Just take this in here and twist, and you've got it. Jerry stayed proudly as she opened the safe, and tools everything beside her. I was not wanting to think about how my mind initially took those words. Meanwhile, while searching two bucks. Disarmed, they were no bigger than me, especially in the right places. No, dragon, shut up! I'd already taken their ammo, their guns, including a scoped sniper rifle. Once they whatever supplies they had before taking their backs to the wall with some wonder glue Jerry had found. All the while I was looking at the strange markings on their armor. I had far more incentive to figure out who these ponies were now I was aware they had taken my friend. And there was only a small shard of reason left in me to resist the urge to charge guns blazing in any direction until I finally found them. I found the distraction in Cherry as she rummaged through the rusty safe. There there had been a ton of waterlogged brown paper, a few old beds, and some medical supplies, including some cans and two healing potions. The temptation to take one for my crippled leg had been unbearable, but I'd resist until I could see a real doctor. Thankfully, there were no more recordings of memory orbs, both of which were now as unwelcome as ever. When I caught my eyes, however, as it did seem to captive Cherry's attention, be pleasant, was a small inscription run upon the base of a small statuette depicting a timid-looking yellow pegasus, with long pink mane and triple butterfly cutie mark. I've heard of these. My sister, Trouble, found one once. It was Pinkie Pie, I think. They're really rare and they're magical. It is a fortune if you can bring yourself to part with one. Jerry stated excitedly as I levitated out the statuette of flesh, ministry mirror of the Ministry of Peace. The point of abandon these ponies lying down around us. That's all I contradict in the good feeling that washed over me as my magic touched the figure that I looked to my giddy companion. She was far more deserving of the description it posted than I was. Here, you take it. I suggested kindly, levitating it to her. She looked strangely horned as she took it in her magic. I saw the same pleasant effect wash over her with far more respect for it. Thank you. I don't know what to say. I've looked for one of these ever since my sisters found hers. All kind of some water on her own. She met with slight embarrassment. I didn't know what to think about the negative topic of her dead family as the statuette's magic chased it away. I smiled at her as she placed a yellow mare in her saddlebags and turned back to another unwelcome sight. Not that either of those fighters could move without tearing the hair off their rumps. At that moment, my insides gave another unpleasant scrum and I winced. So much for being pleasant, my mind remarked thoroughly. Are you okay? 
Charlie asked, a turn becoming defaulted in my head. I first a hoof to my gun, nodding weakly at her. She saw right through on that lie. Trying to fire. I saw the mess in the carpet and... She all along as if thinking what she wanted to say next. Oh yeah, that. But what should I tell her? Should I lie? Abuse her trust again? You're good at that. I mind that slightly. I abused that thought instead. I'm fine. Just some bug. You'll get used to them out here. And her skeptical acknowledgement galloped back into my mind. It's happening all over again, isn't it, Dragonfire? My mind unknowingly. I slammed the door in its sly face. No, this was not like that. Tell her that I was fine, saved her from worry. It saved her then a little bit more. Saving her was all I could do. Unfortunately, she wasn't the only one who needed saving. Furthermore, neither of our captives were providing any indication as to where my companion was. All I knew was that it involved his table. Yet there were several I knew of around in the Merhavi. By the goddess, can't anything be simple? I internally groaned, once again reaching from my broadcaster, only to find the silent again. What's that? Cherry asked, pointing to the broadcaster as she stowed away the last of her findings in her saddlebags. I can't pick up the single from Star's broadcaster. He always has one so we can talk to each other. Only well, has his way off range from a pick up to pick up. My explanation was as much as to her as it was a reality check for me. Damn it, I have to stop going for something that wasn't going to happen and get a message for, to him myself. To do that, I was going to need something bigger. I merely shook my Lisbeth buck in frustration, growling angrily as I looked down at it. What are you looking at? The fuel question flashed through my head, and I almost imagined the thing projecting its black expression into my vision with its new found functionality. The more of reality came running at me. I couldn't do this. What about Cherry? Getting her home. What about me? I was in no state to continue the job, and yet... I knew something bigger. I groaned. I think it was one of the first times I said such a thing while not referring to some stallion's neithers. Cherry looks turned skeptical. For a moment, I thought she'd come to that conclusion also. I flushed, swiftly correcting myself. Something to send a message with more range. A bigger broadcaster. Something to send a message with more range. A bigger broadcaster. She seemed to think about that, resting a forehead to her chin thoughtfully. The heard my previous words seemed to slip out of her head. As I looked at the pet buck sitting around my foreleg, spinning out my tongue at the thing, then I did the same thing to the bucks as my frustration simmered. Unfortunately, fortunately I had something they didn't. A smart pony like Jerry. Well, about that broadcast, Terry, we passed on the road. My sweet smart pony's voice suddenly chimmed. I paused, seizing my foolish actions immediately before looking at her. The garage broadcast tower? You're a genius! I called out, waving my hooves in emphasis. Okay, so maybe not all the foolishness has escaped me. But still, my companion smiled, blushing heavily, and it was unbearably adorable. She hadn't expected her verbal contribution to matter so much, had she? I knew that look, that adorably humble look. I could hug her again. Given that neither of us had been scared shitless lately, I resisted the urge. Instead, I took one last look at my pit bug, and had the strange things. It was projecting to my vision. I could do this, for a start. I didn't love him, but God damn me if I didn't want to do something to save him. How much just have to wait? Food now, level up. You per garden, be pleasant. No matter how bad the world around you may get, you must always try to do better. You gain plus 5 to charisma and gain special dialogue options with certain ponies. 